Hello, this is Jeffrey Burns. I'm a professor of medicine and pediatrics at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine in Philadelphia in the Renal Electrolyte and Hypertension Division. I'm also editor-in-chief of Medscape Nephrology. I'm doing this video blog from home today on Sunday afternoon, hence the casual attire and no tie. I thought I'd actually talk for a minute or two about phosphate, uh, having just given a couple of talks about this, and uh, which forced me to go back into the literature uh, and look at some information about phosphate in patients with CKD, uh, not on dialysis, as well as those on dialysis. An interesting couple of papers were published uh, in 2005 and 2007 in non-dialysis patients and non-CKD patients, and in essence normal uh, individuals, showing that increasing phosphate levels within the normal range were associated with increased uh, cardiovascular and all-cause mortality, <clears throat> an interesting observation. Uh, only one observation similarly that I could come up with uh, was done in CKD patients not on dialysis, showing in fact that a phosphate level above about uh, four or so is associated with increased mortality. We're all aware of the literature in dialysis patients showing increasing phosphate levels are associated with increasing mortality. But what I found very interesting when I went back and looked at these studies is that when one looks at the uh, unadjusted uh, phosphate levels, that is just the raw data, it's not until phosphate levels get up to above 8 or 9 milligram per deciliter that there's an increase in, in mortality associated with phosphate levels. And it's only after after multivariable adjustments and case mix adjustments, that phosphate levels in the range that we think of as being deleterious, that is in the range of about five or, or so, or five and a half milligrams per deciliter, are actually associated with adverse outcomes. Uh, there's actually very little in the way of prospective randomized controlled trials showing that any particular phosphate level is better than another in dialysis or CKD patients, particularly when we come to think about phosphate binders. And in fact, the KDGO preliminary guidelines have actually initially suggested, and these aren't final, that there's a lack of high-quality evidence to demonstrating that lowering serum phosphate levels with phosphate binders improves patient outcomes. These guidelines also suggest that data from randomized controlled trials don't allow recommendation of a specific phosphate binder or a specific level of serum phosphate that should be uh, targeted with phosphate binder therapy. <clears throat> The cost of phosphate binder therapies in the United States has got to be well over $300 million per year. It seems to me that what we might want to do with that $300 million is, is use some of it instead uh, to make it uh, easier for us to provide for our patients better dialysis than we're currently able to provide with three times weekly in-center hemodialysis. For instance, nocturnal hemodialysis, which we know uh, is much better at clearing phosphorus uh, and at the same time allowing patients a much better um, uh, or a much freer uh, diet. Uh, with many fewer restrictions. So what do you think? Uh, I'd ask you to use the, the uh, comment section on this blog to talk about uh, phosphate binder therapy and dialysis patients. Are we steering our, our patients in the wrong direction by piling on phosphate binders when really we should, should be looking more closely at whether they're in fact uh, beneficial in the long term for our patients and whether we shouldn't be focusing more on providing better dialysis? Thank you.